Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, on this live, I didn't set up the normal uh, equipment and things that we normally use shooting uh, the lives uh, to stream. Uh, this is actually being streamed from my, my phone. Uh, the reason being, uh, in a few moments, uh, probably right after I finish this live segment my daughter is going to invade my space in my office to have an interview for admissions into a particular school um, and so I set everything up for her but I did want to talk to you guys I'm going to actually propagate hello Kim I'm actually I'm going to propagate the description box with information that coincides with what I'm sharing here with you I didn't feel like thumb typing all of uh, what I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to add it manually when I finish, um, you know, in a, in a format that's more easier for me to do so and less time consuming. But I did want to stop and talk to you guys. Uh, one thing that I want to encourage you guys to do is connect with me. If you're serious about taking your, your, uh, your life to the next level, in any form whatsoever. Uh, I have three slots currently available that I would love for anyone who has direct access to these videos to get. Uh, I think I'm making myself clear as far as that goes. Anyway, um, those of you who have followed me for any significant amount of time are aware of the fact that uh, I wear a bunch of hats, but two primary. Uh, outside of my personal life, obviously I wear the hat of husband, father, grandfather, and all that stuff, you know, uh, that comes. But as far as the, the things that I commit myself to, I commit myself to my business and uh, in one way or another, my business is about uh, personal and business development and helping people achieve a higher level in life through the Visionetics Institute. Uh, there's also Master Fitness 21, which ties into that. Uh, there's my role as the Dean of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at Array of Hope Theological Seminary, uh, where I also sit, you know, in, in, in function. But all of that deals with personal uh, development, personal growth, uh, personal empowerment. The other side of the spectrum uh, where I wear a hat is in working within the black community to help empower my people. Uh, you have probably heard me say that I identify with being a black man before anything else. Everything else is built on the foundation of my blackness. And so I take pride in that and I work very hard to do that. Well, in the process of actually studying uh, a phenomenon within the black community, uh, in which uh, there was this ongoing idea that because at that time, uh, slavery had been over for roughly 130 years, uh, that blacks should be over it by now and that there should be no lingering uh, effect and no residual effect of slavery. And that was a scoffing at the idea of multi-generational trauma, the transmission of uh, trauma over generations. And I began to conduct research and I began to look deep off into uh, how it could be done, um, you know, and, you know, first of all, looked at social learning theory and how social learning theory impacts the development of our youth and how things are passed on through uh, that particular process of learning and becoming. But in the process, uh, and I'm going to cut this to the short version, in the process, I decided to study uh, the Jews and their response to their experience in the Holocaust. A uh, very traumatic experience, last about 12 years, and it was devastating. But I looked at the way they responded. Now, obviously, they weren't responding to uh, hundreds of years of trauma and 
continued or re-injury, uh, which is the issue within the black community. They were responding to that specific thing. But there was this thing that popped up, the study of epigenetics. And in studying epigenetics, I, good morning, uh, Eric, uh, in, in um, studying epigenetics, I learned a lot. Uh, it became a, a passion of mine to study. Uh, I have written numerous papers on epigenetics and psychology, um, epigenetic, epigenetics impact on psychology, the merging of the mind and body. Um, we've known for quite some time uh, through the science and study of psychosomatics, uh, mind and body, that the mind impacts the body. What we aren't we're clear on is how much the, the body impacts the mind uh, reversely. But in epigenetics, it talks specifically about the ability to genetically pass down trauma, um, which means that literally every traumatic experience you have creates an imprint on your DNA, on your genes. And what happens is these imprints can be seen as tags, epigenetic tags, and they represent that experience. And it p plays a role in, in how trauma plays out, traumatic memory and all those things. Not going to get deeply off into this because I want to make a point about how we think. And I want to make a point about the power we have to heal through our thinking, through our mindset, through our state of mind. Uh, it's both scientific. It's, it, uh, no, it's scientific, psych psychological. It's even biblical. But we have to be willing to step back and understand things. And so... In studying epigenetics, basically, I learned first and foremost that through epigenetic tags, you can literally pass down to your progeny uh, the remnants of your traumatic experience. Jews from the Holocaust who had grandkids who weren't even alive during the Holocaust, those grandkids were literally having dreams about experiences that took place in the Holocaust that had never been shared with them. And... The study of it brought brought on the uh, understanding of the passing down of uh, um, genetic tags. Now, God, in his infinite wisdom, designed us to, for the most part, be able to filter out these negative experiences that impact us on a genetic level. Uh, this is done through a process of meiosis. Mitosis is the cellular reproduction of every cell in the body, uh, with the exception of the reproductive organ mechanisms. Uh, mitosis is how cells reproduce themselves, each cell able to reproduce ident two identical cells to itself before dis disposing of itself. This is how you have, over the course of the next three months, an entirely new layer of skin that didn't exist today because the body is steady reproducing itself. Now what happens is as you age, the body loses its ability to do that effectively. Uh, most cancers that are tumorous come from uh, genetic uh, uh, abnormalities in which mutations take place in during this process. And they are fueled by a number of different things, including um, traumatic experiences, which, which I'm gonna get to. But anyway, what happens is in mit mitosis, it's cellular reproduction. In meiosis, which is the uh, cellular reproduction of uh, that's associated with the reproductive system, a process takes place in which uh, the egg and uh, the sperm and the ovum are both produced after a filtering process. That's why a woman has a cycle. Not, again, not going to get into the specifics of it, but it's a cleansing process. That's why if the egg isn't fertilized during ovulation, it's, the, it's discarded as a part of the cycle uh, when a woman reaches you know, that part of the month. Uh, it's, it's meant to produce an egg that doesn't have, but the problem is the more traumatic the experience, the harder it is to filter out uh, that tag and in instances that tag can be still passed on. You can literally be born with a proclivity to trauma, but also carrying some of the characteristics of being traumatized. That's uh, where some of the inexplicable behave behavior comes from. But I studied and I studied and what happened is I began to learn that the backside
uh, I believe the on the backside, it's even more emphatic. It's not simply the passing down of the tag. It's the experiences of one's own life. Now, ha coming from a parent that was traumatized, and we're talking about not PTSD. PTSD is a, a one-off event. PTSD happens when a traumatic event happens and you're traumatized by it. Blacks tend to be suffering from what's known as complex trauma, the stacking of trauma, whether it's the same traumatic event over and over again, like being molested, raped, or, or beaten on, or just multiple different things, you know, experiencing murder, experiencing death, having a parent, uh, your parents divorce. All of these are what's known as uh, adverse childhood experiences, ACEs and they all have a certain level of a traumatic impact. You have four of these in your life and a lot of different things uh, that are considered detrimental to your health uh, rise in the uh, statistical category of risk. Uh, if you have four ACEs, say for instance, uh, you witnessed abuse in the home, your parents divorced, your father went to prison, um, you saw someone murdered, okay you are 12 times more likely to uh, be suicidal. You are four times more likely to develop diabetes. You're four times more likely to develop heart disease. And these things don't stop at a certain point if they're not addressed. They can, they're can they literally carried on into life and they follow you throughout your entire life. That's the impact of this. But this goes to the development of the mind and the thinking as well. Uh, where epigenetics got its start was in studying identical twins. Identical twins share the same DNA. They look identical. They, they start out, but if you ever notice the vast majority of twins, the older they get, the more that you're able to distinguish between the two. And the more difference in the lifestyles that they live, the more easier it becomes to distinguish between them. In other words, they studied a set of twins throughout their lives, starting back in the 50s. Uh, and one sister had this unbelievable life, met a guy young, got married, had this wonderful life. The other one had a much more difficult time and it showed in her body, it showed in her appearance, it showed in her health. And so it, it, it shows that as you expose yourself to environment, it impacts you genetically. And what we're talking about epigenetics, we're talking about above the gene. So we're not talking about changing the, the DNA genetic sequence, we're talking about changing gene expression. Gene expression means that you can turn a gene on or off. Everybody has cancer genes in their body. Everybody has disease genes of all kind in their body. It's whether or not they're turned on and off. Well, we know now that how you experience life and how you think will increase the proclivity. People who stress a lot are more prone to develop diseases, including cancer. We understand that there are people who have actually treated themselves through mind processes with no introduction of any type of chemical and literally heal themselves of cancer. Documented cases of the power of the mind to heal. This is all God given. We have perverted so much of what we were given that we don't practice it. That's why the state of mind is so important. That's why I train my clients that the first part of your day is the most important part. Why? That's when you set your state, your mental state, your state of existence, your state of expectation, your state of gratitude. And it's so important that you do that. And the problem is that the more you expose yourself to negative thought, hypertension, a great deal of that actually comes from how we think and how we perceive things. There's a story of a woman who was diagnosed with cancer and decided that she was going to enter into a state of mind of purity, that if it was going to take her out, she was going to enjoy life and not be stressed out by it. She ate healthy, but she thought healthy. She did not take any medication. She did not take any invasive treatments, no chemotherapy, no experimental, experimental therapy. She just decided to eat healthy. And every day she spent several hours meditating and just declaring in herself who she was. And she just got to a point where having the disease meant absolutely nothing to her. And in that moment, they started to test her and find out that the disease had left that a great deal of what drives our inability to heal ourselves is the stressing about everything that's going on in our lives, the stressing 
about the illness itself, the stressing about what we're going to do about this problem and that problem. And then when you're born into different situations that come with stress, poverty, broken homes, uh, violent communities, all of this stuff adds to that stress and it adds to your ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. So by the time you're an adult, you've already got a uh, proclivity for illness. You're already set up to have situations come along uh, that are not going to be conducive to good health. Uh, and so what do you do? You have to take the reins of your personal sovereignty. You have to do it. If you go to it, for, for, for all the people who are Christians, one of my most, um, and I want, if you're not a, a believer, this still applies in, in principle and in science. So I want you to pay attention to this because I can back it up and talk to you from any direction you want to talk about this in. Because thank God I, I invested in studying it from, from both angles. Uh, but uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse 3. Though we war in the flesh, we do we're not uh, though we war in the flesh, though though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. Our weapons are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself in the knowledge of God, bringing what? Every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ. If you actually study the Bible, get out of all of the religious uh, precepts, concepts, and ideas. Just study it and you look at it for what it is and you look at it. Outside of the command to know the Bible or to know the word of God, or to be familiar with the word of God and aware of the word of God, the next most common command in the Bible throughout the Bible is what? Guard your hearts and minds. In the Bible, when it says hearts, it's the Greek. In Hebrew, it's the uh, word lev. In the, in the Greek, it's the word cardiac. And it's not talking about the physiological heart. It's talking about the center of the soul. Well, what we know now, the center of the soul is the subconscious. It is a subconscious mind. The subconscious mind controls 96 to 97 percent of all of our behavior all of our decision making all of our habits so when you guard it and when you dictate what's coming into it and what's coming out of it you control your life that's what christ meant uh in matthew when he says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and then there's so many other verses that talks about the heart and what it does the mind is the conscious part of the soul that's your conscious the heart is the subconscious. The heart has the most control. It's the center of the soul. So what we keep in our heart, our subconscious, will govern our behavior. It will govern our thinking, but it will also govern our responses when we meet adverse situations. We cannot circumvent the vicissitudes of life. We cannot circumvent the struggles of life. We cannot get past the things that will come in life, but we do control how we respond to them. We do control whether we become frenetic and unglued, whether we become uh, bothered and hindered and, and paralyzed and crippled by what happens, or if we become empowered, if we look at it, it, it is all... Um, a part of destiny that you are built for it one thing i do is i teach that i am built for everything that i face i am built for the battle i am built for whatever struggles i'm going through this is, is something that is imperative that we learn i've got to get ready to get out of here uh because my daughter's going to need this space and there's a lot going on, but I had to bring this to you. I'm going to put some stuff in that information box so that you can jump on it. I want you to understand that you are not stuck where you are, that there's something that you can do to change it, but you've got to be willing to examine how you're thinking. You got to be willing to examine the environments you are allowing yourself to exist in. Those are the things that are having an impact that you cannot avoid a, um, uh, uh, that you cannot avoid or ignore because it will have an impact on you. Uh, I'm going to keep coming to you with more of these things. If you want to actually check it out in a more detailed message, look up my work. Uh, my my uh, latest book, I Am, talks about the thinking part and the speech part. But uh, the latest book, I Am, is the 21st book. The 22nd book just released this past Tuesday. And it is... 
the undoing of the African-American mind, the introduction of collective, uh, cognitive, uh, collective cognitive bias reality syndrome. Uh, it's a theory of mind that, that came to uh, d describe and explain the collective behavior of my people. Uh, but whether you're black or not, epigenetics is real. Look up uh, my work on the internet, epigenetics and psychology. It should be out there somewhere. Um, if not, uh, hit me up and I'll send you a PDF of it. But you've got to learn and understand that how you're viewing things, your perception is literally dictating your body, uh, the way your body feels. A lot of things that you're sitting up and saying I don't feel right about is actually the feeling of discomfort that comes when you are in an unfamiliar, uh, unfamiliar situation. Oh, yes, Kim, Critical Mass was book number 20. And uh, the first book in a two book series that was followed by I Am. Um, Kim is also a client. So if you want to get an idea of what it's like to work with me long term, uh, definitely, you know, talk with Clem, Kim. Uh, she is a current client. She's been with me for a while and she can tell you how I put what I'm sharing with you into practice uh, to facilitate healing and growth. But I'm going to get off of here now, but definitely I'm going to put all this stuff in the description box shortly and you can come back and get it. Uh, for those of you who are going to be watching it on the replay, it'll already be there by the time you watch it. So again, thank everybody. I got to get off of here. Uh, let my baby come in and get in my office. And I'm real big on my space. I am highly territorial. So this is going to be me showing love to my baby because I don't want nobody in my office. Uh, but anyway... You guys have a great day. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. My challenge to you is to do the same thing. I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.